Hello and welcome back to Dream Girl. I'm Sheen, your host, and today we're joined by our first ever couple on the podcast. So we're joined by Noor and Maysar, Dr. Mace, and they are the incredible founders of The Inner Space, and they will be telling us a lot more about spiritual healing, about everything to do with couple life, running a business together, and so much more. I will let them introduce themselves in a bit, but for now, welcome. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very excited. First podcast with a couple. Mesar, how does it feel? You're a special guest. <laughs> it feels good. I yeah. mean, beautiful ladies around me. I have to feel good. Yeah, nothing to complain about, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, so tell us a bit more. I'll start with you, Noor. Tell me a bit more about yourself. Okay, so I'm Noor Fayyad. I'm a spiritual therapist and a holistic counselor. By profession, I'm an interior designer, so that's mm-hmm. my BA. And I had like uh, throughout, like after a few years of doing interior design and us getting married, moving to the States for um, some reasons, pregnancy and kids related, I I had to drop off my master's in product design. And it was because of him, like he was uh, already into spiritual psychology, spoke a language that I never understood. And um, I was so much in my ego, right? And I wanted to get him and get what he's saying. So... And because of the drop of the college, it's, I couldn't travel because of the pregnancies. And uh, he pushed me through it. And that's how I started my journey with spiritual psychology. I'm a mother of three. Wow. I'm a yoga teacher. Mm-hmm. And this is like my life is really going into a holistic uh, mode. And um, it's, it's like translating and uh, uh, just spreading into my kids, into my family, into my home. So that's briefly like what I do and who I am. Amazing. Dr. Mace, tell us about yourself. Oh, um, I'm an architect by profession. Mm-hmm. I'm a businessman. I'm a philosopher and I'm a psychologist. So uh, I, I was in Dubai from... I left Dubai in 2010, but I still have my business in uh, Dubai. And uh, I moved to the uh, States where I pursued a degree in uh, spiritual uh, psychology. And then I continued. I got my master's in depth psychology and then my doctorate in uh, community liberation and eco psychology. Mm -hmm. So, yes, um, enough for now. Okay. (laughs) so tell us what is spiritual psychology? This is the first time I encountered this with you guys. So what is it? So when we, when we talk about psychology, we, we, we usually take the scientific definition of it. So psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Right? That's how people understand it. But if you, if you really look at the, if you break down the word into the Latin origins of the word, it's psyche and logos. Psyche is the breath of life or the soul. And Logos, of course, is the knowledge or the study of. So psychology originally was the study of the soul. Mm -hmm. Through time, it evolved to the study of the brain and the study of the the mind. And somehow the psyche, the soul, got lost in the process. And so spiritual psychology brings back the psyche into the heart of psychology. And so psychology is really, spiritual psychology is the study of conscious awakening, awakening into the reality of who you truly are, a spiritual being of love and light, having and using a human experience for the sole purpose of growth and evolution. Oh, wow. That that is so interesting. And you know what? When I was reading about your work, I saw that you said that using our own setbacks and challenges in life as well plays a huge role in who we are and how we grow internally, right? What what would you like to add to that? You know, I agree because today, and, and this is basically what we're here, like, this is our mission, I would say. And what Maisar was sharing about um, uh, uh, the study of the mind and the behavior, it makes it more on the goal line. So anything that's tangible, we can study. Anything that's intangible, we cannot study. Mm-hmm. We cannot study the soul as we cannot study the mind. So we go without a soul and a mind, you know. For medicals, medical MDs, I'm always in conflict with those people because they believe that life is all about the brain you know (laughs) but then where does the mind go you know and this is I think why they broke it down and they changed the essence of it because it made it um, quantified if I may say but then today you know 2023 um, energy is proven 
It's mm-hmm. already quantified epigenetic level, quantum physics, you know, and we no longer need to prove that energy exists and that we have to go back to the soul. We have to incorporate. We can no longer be physical beings only, but we can have a physical experience to fulfill a spiritual curriculum. And this is why we're here. We have a physical curriculum. We're born. We have to go. We have to. We should be doing certain things. We should achieve certain things. And that's the growth. You know, it's, it's like the goal of every person is to go to school, to graduate, to go to college, to graduate. And then you get married. You have kids. And it's all about doing more and more and more and more into life. But then I see, at least based on our experience, that people are not happy on that level because the more they have, the more they want. And it's about time to um, uh, sit back, I would say, and re-reflect on whatever is happening and see what is not working. Because we say like it's um, sane to be doing the same thing again and again, (laughs) over and over and expect a different result, Mm -hmm. right? So we are achievers. We are goal-oriented people. It's all about the better. It's all about the more. It's all about moving the negative experience to become a more positive experience so that you feel more fulfilled, you feel happier. But then I promise everybody that this cannot be found on that goal level. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the binaries of the good and bad, the right and wrong, the should and shouldn't, like this doesn't work. And it's about time to start lifting ourselves upwards into that other level of transcendence where fulfillment could be found there because you go back to remembering, to remembering who you are at first. You're born out of love and light. You're born, you have like the God energy in you, you know, and your behaviors are good and bad, are wrong or right. So the behavior is defined or is judged, but that doesn't doesn't mean that you as a person, you are a bad person, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And this we need to make clear that we have a physical line of life, but then we have a learning line of life, which is more of a spiritual line, and we have to evolve into into that, remembering who we are, knowing our essential nature, and from there, fulfillment, happiness, creativity, um, uh, compassion, empathy, these mm-hmm. are the derivatives of this line. Mm-hmm. And even when you say remembering, it's you know the word means remembering putting back together what you have forgotten mm-hmm. all those it's like it's like I, I remember the book a million little pieces mm-hmm. i can't remember the author but yeah, yeah the, so it's like p- putting all those pieces back together to really discover your wholeness mm. and that's that's the essence of uh, spiritual psychology it takes you on an inner journey where you come face to face with your emotions with your fears with your feelings with your thoughts because if you're able to really understand just observe, you know, with no judgment, just observe what's going on within you. Once you understand the dynamics of your system, then you're able to make changes. Mm -hmm. And before that, there is no way, there is no way to change anything because you're in constant conflict. And as long as there is conflict, you cannot change, Mm -hmm. you cannot evolve. Wow, I I love what both of you said about this. And, you know, like me being among young people who are all coming out of university, getting jobs, there is so much unhappiness and they are getting what they wanted. A lot of people are living in the dreams that they used to have back in the days, but now they're unhappy, they're struggling. And in a day of social media where we're always connected, there's loneliness like never before. And that's why I feel like there is so much... Um, importance that needs to be laid on healing, on understanding yourself, understanding how you fit into the bigger picture. Why are you here? And for me personally, one thing that I know that I was struggling with was what is my purpose? I don't Mm -hmm. want to just be working in a corporate job, making a lot of money. And as you said, you're always looking for more and Mm -hmm. bigger and better, bigger house, bigger car, and you keep aiming for the next promotion. And at the end of the day, you're in a golden cage. Right. And that's it. You're you're not free. And that's what kind of like led me to understand a little bit more about what my purpose was. And that's how I got onto this journey. But if you were to reflect on a time when you had this experience of like, you know, when the, the bell dropped a little, when you were like, okay, this was something I hadn't noticed before on your healing journey. What would that be if you'd be willing to share? I would be more than happy to share my, uh, my story. So, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. 
And so I battled with that throughout my throughout my early years into you know into my adolescence into my early adulthood. It was so, you know the feelings of shame, the feelings of guilt. You know, you know the the amount of judgment I had on myself that I'm a bad person, that you know I deserved all this. And so and uh, more more than that, also the my family dynamics, my relationship with my father, and you know the amount of pressure I was uh, I was under to 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 be in a certain way, to show up in a certain way but nobody really understood all the pain all the all the all the hurt that I was carrying within me and I didn't know what to do with it I got suicidal twice it, I got into a severe depression I just could not could not understand how can I move forward so to cut the story short you know I graduated I moved to Abu Dhabi and then I decided to leave to Dubai and to start on my own and I think the universe was on my side. I think something was cooking, you know, it's like preparing me for something. Mm -hmm. So I started off my business in Dubai and it kicked off. It was, it was just like that. It just mm -hmm. happened. I don't know how, you know, I went from, you know, a one, uh, a one man show to 20 people working uh, uh, with me. Um, I had everything, everything you could ever imagine. I flew private jets. I was doing everything any young man would do. But I was the most miserable person because nobody was able, nobody, nobody saw my tears when I was alone. Nobody saw the amount of pain that I had to go through every single day, you know, to to just keep to keep myself alive till the next morning. You know, so that's that's how I lived my uh, my life. And then in two thousand and three, two thousand and four, I had I had like I had a breakdown. It was like a midlife crisis. I I just. I was so miserable and I did, you know, despite everything I had, I, I wanted to find a purpose. And so I started looking into spirituality and uh, I traveled uh, to, uh, to India and I, you know, I had, a, I had a mentor who was a disciple of Krishnamurti, you know, one of the most famous uh, spiritual philosophers. And I worked with him for about uh, uh, three years and my life really took a, took a turn. Um, so I, I was I was still in Dubai. I thought back then that you know maybe if I if if I if I added to my to my uh, academic achievements on the goal line of life, maybe that would make me happy. Mm. And so I went and I did uh, I did my master's executive in executive uh, business administration here at the, the IFC, mm -hmm. and then I, I I went to Beirut and I did my my master's in uh, philosophy. I felt better, but there was still something missing. You know, I I could not find what is it. And uh, we, I, Noor and I uh, uh, met, we got married, we moved to the States. And I, I, I moved to the States in, in, uh, because I wanted to join a program in San Francisco, which was in transpersonal psychology. Somehow, again, the universe, I came across the University of Santa Monica and, you know, I have spiritual psychology. What was spiritual psychology all about? For me, it was like crap. You know? mm. I didn't get it. And uh, I started looking into it. Uh, they were offering uh, uh, like a, a short a workshop, which is the workshop we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. uh, today, called Loyalty to Your Soul. And it was so intriguing. I mean, what is Loyalty to Your Soul? I did the workshop. It was, it was like the aha moment. Mm. So I, when I walked out of the workshop, I was like, now I get it. Now I get what I want to do. And so I started pursuing uh, that. We did. I did the the, the masters. Uh, Noor joined a year after, and then I continued in uh, depth psychology. And I were I, I the, the reason I did my doctorate. The title of my doctorate was uh, uh, domestic violence against women in the Arabic uh, uh, in the Arab uh, world. And I took a depth psychological perspective, trying to understand how can we empower women. In, in in our part of uh, in our part of the uh, the world and that was you know the the best thing the best investment i have ever done mm -hmm. and i realized with time that my purpose was to really serve was to be there for people people that i wished were there for me when i needed them the most in my life mm -hmm. and that 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 is the that is i think the 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 the, the What's the, that's the the main the core purpose mm. of me being on this planet and at this uh, time to really be of service to really support people out of love and you know because because when I connect with people who come who walk into my clinic I don't connect with them as a client 
I really connect heart to heart. Mm-hmm. And when they when I hear stories about rape and abuse, you know, I I understand the pain. It's not that I'm, you know, I read a theory and I practiced it, you know, at the college and I'm coming to 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 to, to practice at the clinic. I speak out of my experience and how I felt and how I was able to to really help myself uh, out of it. And of course, Noor played a big part, you know, uh, for the 11 years we were together for her, you know, uh, endless support, uh, uh, the unconditional love, the the. Uh, the, you know all the care all the all the times when she stood by me when I when I was at my at my at my lowest and for that I'm grateful and uh, this has been the the story of us coming together it's a story born out of love the inner space is our our uh, uh, space in Lebanon it's a holistic place also born out of love and what we do in the clinic is we offer unconditional love and that is where people heal People don't want theories. People want connection. People yearn for this connection, the heart-to-heart connection, the soul-to-soul connection. When I'm just not a client who comes in to pay whatever money they're paying, they come in because they understand that they are not judged, there is unconditional love, and we will go out of our way to support because we understand the importance of this kind of work these days on our planet where things are just chaotic. And I, mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, it's, it's, it's just chaotic. <laughs> it is chaotic. It is chaotic. Wow, that, thank you for sharing that. Thank that you. was very, very deep. And mm-hmm. I love what you said about connecting heart to heart. And honestly, I feel like love is really missing these days. I think especially because we communicate through screens. And just this morning I was having this conversation where I said that I love calling my parents every day. I would not send a message because I think the emotions get lost yeah. when you're messaging. But when you're hearing someone's right. voice, that connection is so different. And that's exactly what you were saying, how, you know, mm-hmm. this connection, with, you need the love to be there for, for it. It can't just be like through random things and just being superficial with our relationships. Right. Uh, Einstein and his last letter to his daughter. I'm not, I don't know if you know the story. No, please tell in me. His last letter to his daughter. So, you know, in the letter, he says uh, that I have discovered so many uh, theories and so many laws, but I can tell you that the strongest force in the universe is love. Not in, as in I love you and you love me, but, you know, the bigger sense of love, mm-hmm. the, un- the way the universe embraces you with love, the way, if I don't want to use the word God, but yes, the way, the way we're, we're, we're cuddled with, uh, with love, but we, we don't see it. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's not tangible. We, 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 we don't see it. And we, we think that we, we are separate. We are disconnected from the universe. Where in reality, we are all connected. You and I, with everything around us. With nature, with, with, with everything. Even with the, you know, with the buildings around us. You're connected. There's a sense of connection. And that's why when we live in cities that are too cold, we feel we're disconnected. We feel, we, you know, there's something missing. For example, you go to Tokyo, they put a lot of emphasis on creating spaces in the, in the middle of the city where people can connect together. You know, whether it's, you know, the gardens, whatever, what have you. We need that connection. We need to come together. We need to be with, with one another because that's the only way we can sustain this life and we can grow. You know, I think I have an important question. Here. Oh, please. Would you know, what, uh, like, do you know what's the opposite of love? indifference this is what people think right Mm. some people would say hate this is the first thing that comes to mind but uh if we're talking about love Mm. as an energy not Mm. as an emotion and as a feeling um it's the fear fear Mm. and you have two options in life like it's either you come out of a state of fear or of a state of love it's either out of the ego centric and you know like people think the ego is about me showing up and showing off no the ego is about fear fight or flight response or freeze you know this is what it is the ego is about the binaries plus and minus the ego is about the judgment the ego is telling you don't do this and don't do that and don't change and don't get out of your comfort zone because you're used that's less threatening to you you know it doesn't want to push you out of your comfort zone so you have love fear 
you have uh, authentic self, you have the ego. These are the opposites, you know, and this is the shift. The shift is if you ask me about my story, I would tell you I was never a subject to abuse, but I am a person who's uh, a control freak, control freak, who is a perfectionist who doesn't never believe that she, I did enough. And I always want to do more, you know, I think also my productivity understanding or definition of productivity for me is somehow distorted or was, I would want to say. Um, I was a person who, who functions under very high levels of anxiety, constantly anxious. And then one thing I realized after the Loyalty to Your Soul workshop that I did is that I'm in so much fear in my life that I fear being judged. I fear showing up to be who I am. I fear saying the truth. I fear speaking up my mind. You know, I come from a conservative culture. I cannot say what I want to say. I can't be who I want to be. Um, and I'm a person, you know, who likes to express herself, like just out of my mind, what I think, what I feel. I just sit and tell you, you don't have to second guess what is going on. But it didn't work because, you know, I was egocentric and so are all the people around me. And we all were acting out of a place of fear mm -hmm. of that state. And like I was in the judgment against myself. I wouldn't want to say the judgment against the other, you know. And one shift for me was just to move from that state of fear, from the binaries, from the good and bad thing, to moving to that place of love and understanding and coming to that realization that it's who I am. It's who I am. And yes, I do mistakes in life. And yes, those mistakes are sometimes stupid, yeah. you know, like you judge them as so. But at the end of the day, they are learning opportunities for your own growth. So imagine like a program that is there and telling you, you know, if you are on that goal line of achieving constantly, you will never be happy. You know, but if you go upwards and you start transcending, if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs back in 1965, like Maslow came and he just drew it as a triangle. Right. And he put levels and he told you and, and, and he represented the triangle as the number of population in life, you know. So at the very bottom of that triangle, we had the survival mode. And then we have the safety and security. And then we have the relationships. And what he was trying to say is to achieve that self-actualization, you have to learn how to get yourself up from that survival mode. But tell me with all what had been happening in the world since 2020 up until now, with the pandemic, politically, you know, like mm. everything in the world mm. that is going on, you know. Everything, I believe, is pushing us back to that survival, safety, and security um, uh, just need, you know. And who wants aware people? It doesn't serve them, you know. But then what, what happens is that we follow that movement. And even today, if you see, I believe in energy. I believe in science. What is happening on Earth as a planet by itself today from natural catastrophes, I don't want to say anything else, floods that we've never seen, Earthquakes in areas like thousands of people had been dying since February up until now. It's not even six months period because of natural catastrophes. I believe planet Earth, Mother Earth is telling us, wake up. It's about time for people to wake up. We are moving from the age of uh, the Piscean age into the Aquarius age. We are moving from the age of material, of industries, of making, of technology. We have everything. We are unhappy beings. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Why do we ask ourselves, why are we not happy? Though we were able to do everything. We have planes. We have phones. Our life is easy. We, we have AI, space. virtual yeah. work. We went to space, yeah. right? And because we always want more. And that satisfaction doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from you being a CEO doesn't come from fame on social media, doesn't come with one million follower. Mm. It doesn't come with all of this. It comes from within you, from that relationship, because one main principle on, in spiritual psychology, we say, how you relate to the issue is the issue. And how you relate to yourself while you go through the issue is the issue. So a problem cannot be a problem if you don't make it so. And how do you make it so? You have the mental and you have the emotional. 
The mind generates the thought. Emotions are energy in motion. So you give that energy to that thought to make it problematic. And then it's translated what? Physically. Whatever we don't want to deal with, we throw it in the unconscious. This is the model of psychology. You go to psychologists, they will deal with your unconscious. You know, and believe me, on the ego level, you've got so much to do mm. than to go to the unconscious. You know, the ego is the mental and the emotional. The thought generated by the mind, the energy that drives you to do things in life physically, mm -hmm. right? So we need to start changing the relation, the relation with ourselves so that we create less issues, less conflicts. And as we do so, because it starts inside out, not outside in, as we do so, our relationship with our families, with our partners, with our kids, with our organizations, you know, you become loyal to all of this. Mm -hmm. Why? Because now you're connected. Mm -hmm. You know, now you're more connected. Uh, I still have anxiety, okay? I can't say that this, like, dropped my anxiety yes. away. But believe me, I know how to deal with with the issue differently now. Mm -hmm. I know how to relate to challenges differently at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just that voice inside of you that just reminds you constantly, you're that. But then the ego is much more powerful. Mm. Human nature takes over so fast that sometimes you just lose it, yeah. you know? But then you get yourself back on the track and you pick up from there. Mm -hmm. So this is how it is. Fear, love, authentic self and ego goal line of life achieving and soul line of life embodying the loving energy who you like which is who you are mm -hmm. you know and i believe this is a shift in perspective you know it changes the perspective of people and today our judgments to one another are based on what it's how you see like the perception mm -hmm. that you've built because like we say uh, observe uh, perception is edited observation mm. You know, like you grow up observing and just like getting your like giving yourself a perception to mm -hmm. things. And this makes a perspective to you. Mm -hmm. And then anybody who opposes your perspective is wrong. And my ego wants to prove Mesa wrong at all time. And I'm right. Yes. Right. So yes. this, is, this is what we're trying to Ask do all the time. <laughs> Mesa has to take it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. I love what you said because there's also that thing where our inner voice is always talking to us, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the voice that is also the meanest to us most of the time yes. because that's the dialogue that we are feeding ourselves. And given that how nice we are to people around us, always the nicest people are the ones who are the harshest to mm -hmm. themselves. And I've noticed this about myself. We are our harshest critic, like mm -hmm. especially you if you're a perfectionist. Oh my God. Right? Whenever you see something that you've done, you're like, oh God, why is it so bad? But it isn't, right? And there are better ways of communicating that to yourself. So I absolutely love what you said. But my question to you is, given your experience in this field now, you've worked with so many people. And when we think about the concept of love, for example, any type of love, however you connect with different relationships in your life, it's so easy. It's so simple to be kind and loving, but it is also still missing a lot. Why do you think this is the case, especially with the new generation? Why are they all expressing so much more loneliness and mental health disorders and feeling like they don't belong, feeling like they can't find their tribe in the world? Why is that the case? I think I will need to ask uh, this young generation their understanding of love. Mm. I mean, that's the big, the, 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 the big question. And I, I, I would say that with the onset of social media, with all the platforms that are available, with the lack of connectivity, with the superficiality that people are uh, 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 living in, with all the material life that we are so taken, uh, taken by, um, you go around the world. You know, all those young uh, generations, what are they really uh, interested in? I mean, if we go back in time to our, you know, to our parents or our grandparents, there was, there was real connection. Mm -hmm. There was authentic uh, connection. Today, you know, I make a friend on, 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 uh, on Facebook or on Instagram and that, you know, makes me, makes me happy. And I receive a negative comment and that, you know, gets me crashing on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so are we really living the real life, or is this just this an illusion? We're under the illusion of love. We're under the illusion of happiness. But at the core, we are not that. Because all of the, the material world cannot offer us what we truly want. 
This is something we need to seek within because once we seek it within and we discover it, when, like we say, when we remember the light within, then we're able to see the light within others and that is love. That is the true meaning of love. Because, I mean, I can tell you, I love you from now until eternity. Yeah. You know, if I don't really mean it and if I don't embody it, if I don't, if I don't feel it deep down inside, what does it mean to you? Mm-hmm. You know, and the, the thing I'm noticing too, and I see that at the clinic a lot, is so I get couples who have been, uh, you know, in in a relationship for so long. I know a couple. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention just the uh, mm-hmm. briefly about the case mm-hmm. who were who 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 dated each other from when they were in middle school. They went to they graduated. They went to college together. You know, a deep love relationship, or at least that's how they portrayed it. Mm-hmm. They got married, they got a daughter. Before they hit their first anniversary, they got divorced. Where is the love? How could, how, I mean, how could, I mean, my, 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 the question I always ask myself too, how could we, how could love turn into hate? Mm. How could you love someone and then, you know, a few days later you hate them? So that's not love. Mm -hmm. Love is unconditional. Love is when I love you because that's who I am. That's why, what I can offer. The how you respond to me, that's your issue. It's not mine anymore. And I think if people get to that point, if people understand that this is the core of love, then we will start shifting into a new dimension of existence where we really appreciate one another, where we respect one another, and we understand that each and every one of us has their own spiritual curriculum and we're all here to support one another on this journey that we call uh, life and we think it's such an individualistic uh, path while it's not Mm -hmm. because I'm on my path Noor is on her path but we share something in common that where you know I support her she supports me you know I offer her what she needs in times when she's at, you know, she's she's not feeling herself, she does the same, and that 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 that's what we call a partnership, and that creates love. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so interesting, Sheen, what he's saying because we have, uh, I would say, in our culture, we have that this misunderstanding that when we're married or we're with with somebody, we become one. Yeah, the two people become one, and this is a no. Mm-hmm. Right, we don't become one. This we remain, half, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> we remain two different individuals. Yeah. I would say, um, choosing to come together to walk a path, and that disconnection of love, I would say that it has to do with intergenerational trauma. And this is uh, this is one uh, realization that I had of like I had this I was doing this exercise you know the family tree exercise yes. and it came out of like uh, in my course I had to do the family tree and to track women behavior uh, in my family mm-hmm. you know and it was fascinating I did. Uh, research with my parents to understand how my grand grandmother was and what happened and then I saw this much fear in the woman um, in my family that um, there is always in one generation one person who would stand out and say I'm not accepting this I'm cutting the cords because I'm not passing Mm -hmm. not genetic medical you know like it's not about uh, diabetes and all of this I'm no longer passing the traumas I'm no longer passing the fears to my own um, kids you Mm -hmm. know your kids are the first cloning version of you they are born up until seven they don't have reasoning why the ego doesn't exist for kids fear factor zero you know he would put his finger in his mouth and put it in the socket he wouldn't even think right but what these kids feed on is the ego of the parents so the more fear you have the more fearful beings you will um, raise Mm -hmm. because you fear them being judged i don't want anybody to say about my daughter she's bossy and a bully Mm. Right? Yeah. I don't want. So I would do anything to protect this. I would fight with her. Don't do this. Don't, you know, and I would start bringing in my fears, bringing in my fears. If I don't like, uh, I don't know, roller coaster, she's not allowed to go on a yeah. roller coaster because, and this is what we need to break. We need to break those cycles of trauma that we are somehow uh, living uh 
living the trauma without really experiencing it mm -mm. because it's passed it's on, not ours, right? So, yeah. so yeah, it's about time to cu cut the ties with the traumas of the past. It's about time for, um, uh, and, and this is actually what happened with us. You know, we came together and we said we, we're so different, by the way. Yeah, we're like the total opposite. I can tell. You know, and then and then you want to see like how we managed to come together and really have a family, have a home. Uh, but it's very challenging to work together. Mm -hmm. I still have my control issues sometimes that kick in. I have my perfectionist nature, you know, it serves me at so many points, mm -hmm. but like I'm so much aware of these behaviors um, and constant. I'm always a student of spirituality, yeah. so I will never stop even if I'm teaching this at this point. But uh, this is what made, uh, that, that, that was a question you yeah. had, right? This is what made our relationship successful. Um, we really came together and said, you know, it is unconditional. Because sometimes I even feel me as a mother, I do behaviors that don't show unconditional love with my own kids. Yeah. You know, it is conditioned. Like, mm. I want you to be doing so and so. And I, I think many mothers would be able mm. to relate. You know, even my own mother, like she did some stuff to me because she expects like as she grows older, I'll be by her side. You mm. know, like it's a... It's like, I need to get back what yeah. what was given to you. And it's part of a human nature, right? But we have to rise above that. Mm. It's about time to wake up and really come from a totally different perspective and from a totally new dimension. Mm. We can't stay on that same, that same dimension and expect something to change, right? And from there, on that line, on the learning line, on the soul line, awakening into the loving energy of who you are is where you can have have a healthy relationship you raise aware kids you know like even my my own daughters when I speak something they, they go like don't try to work this psychology on us now <laughs> <laughs> they say it yeah. they, because why because now they realized how many times I go and repeat the same thing again and again mm -hmm. and it's all about them loving themselves Lum, them accepting themselves as they are you know now I don't obsess over certain things because I don't want them perfectionist people yeah. I don't want them to be control freak although I still see it with all the awareness that I have I see traits in those kids that I'm like ah, it comes from me you know <laughs> and most of the time when I'm angry at them and this goes to another spiritual psychology super important model when I'm angry at them it's never because of them ego Human nature takes us to a model called I am upset because mm. there is always a justification for my upset, you mm -hmm. know, anger, sadness, deep, whatever I'm feeling. It's mm -hmm. because of somebody doing something that I don't like. Yes. You know, and and then we say, like, imagine that if you're upset without trying to justify it. Mm. But then you own yourself that upset mm -hmm. and you see how can you resolve it between you and you. Because Maysar triggered my upset, he triggered it, yeah. but he was not the cause for it. Mm -hmm. And this I see with my own kids because most of the times when I'm upset at them, mm. it's because of behaviors that they are doing, that they are reminding me of my own behaviors mm. that I don't like within myself. But then it's easy for me to snap at them. Okay, just stop it and go to your room. <laughs> I'm upset. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Right? But then you sit back and you say, why are you upset? I still do the same thing. <laughs> You know, why do I have to just to make myself feel good? Mm. I make her feel bad. Mm. And we have to rise above that concept. Yes. I don't need to make anybody feel bad. You know, we, us as parents, we, um, without noticing, we make them feel bad. We make them feel guilty. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you don't want to say hi to your time. grandma. Mm. Oh, my God, you did not tell her hello. Mm. That's really bad. Mm. Feel bad about it. Yeah. You know, you should feel guilty. Look, that, that's part of life. You know, if not feeling guilty is not normal. <laughs> so so it, it, it's really about time to awaken above that, to mm. rise, to transcend, to come to our nature again, um, to remember who we are as loving beings, having and using a human experience. So two curriculums, physical, mm -hmm. we did it, we completed it, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine like on that physical level, even when we achieved what we achieved, we had three daughters and he has one daughter from a previous marriage and we have two. 
And it was never enough for the culture because we didn't have a boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm serious. Every time I saw someone, like eight years from my youngest to my... I have the boy now. You have the boy now. You know, I'm complete. (laughs) Nobody would say anything. But then imagine, like, every single time I saw somebody, you don't want to have a boy. You should have a boy. Mm. The boy will, can, like, will, will, have will carry succession. on the line, yeah. The, the name of the family, you know, but his father is successful. We sh- now we have the boy, let's see. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now what's the next complaint? What's the next? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. now is a great time to talk about the workshop. Yes. So for the first time, you're bringing Loyalty to Your Soul to Dubai, 27th to 29th of October. So um, hopefully I'll be there as well. Yay. So please tell us more about what to expect in the workshop. It's an intensive workshop. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk from here. Perfect. It's an intensive uh, workshop. It is an experien- highly experiential workshop because the work that we do as facilitators is about 20% of the work. The rest is what the uh, uh, participants uh, will, uh, will, uh, will experience. And so in the workshop where we're going to cover nine basic skills of spiritual uh, psychology and with each skill the participants will get the chance to experience it in uh, 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 in in the setting you know within within the the three days the main exercise that we that, that is that, that is uh, used for all those skills to practice them is what we call a trio exercise so in threes so people will be working in threes and why in threes because they will get the chance for each skill while while they're practicing it to really uh, practice three roles the first is as a client mm-hmm. so I'm sharing my challenge, I'm sharing my story, I'm sharing my concern with regards to the skill. The second uh, is the uh, the, the uh, facilitator or you know, let's assume it's like the, the, the therapist or this, mm. who, you know, someone who's listening. Mm-hmm. And so the facilitator's role is to really listen, to really embody, uh, the, you know, uh, that, that skill And to understand that, you know, through deep listening, through uh, perception checking, through a reflective dialogue, they can they will be able to help the client in order to, you know, come to to come to an understanding of what they're going through. And then the third role, which to me and I think to Noor too, is the most difficult and it's called the neutral observer. Mm -hmm. So you just sit there, imagine yourself, you're like a battery, you're holding the energy between both you don't say anything but you're there in your loving you're just sending love out to both the both individuals while they are going through the skill and so what happens so they 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 it's like it's they have rounds and the skills built up the the trios built up in time so in the fact with the first skill it might be like about let's say 10 minutes Mm, the last yeah the last skill like on the third day we're talking about like an hour and a half Mm. so it really takes a lot of time because it gets deeper and deeper and the connection is deeper and deeper and so individuals feel more safe to really go to the things that really hurt Mm -hmm. um I think Noor also I will, will add have. something here. So yes. just imagine um, uh, nine skills and in trio formats, um, and each trio had three rounds. Mm-hmm. So nine times three is twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. So twenty-seven issue resolution in three days Oof. for each person. Oof. <laughs> you know, issue resolution, and I would say that this workshop will teach people nine basic skill to how to resolve their own issues Mm -hmm. you know and we've got a bonus class actually that we're doing online and it's called seven steps to issue resolution and it comes like after you finish the loyalty to your soul program and and it's really fascinating you know because we say also that every time we heal every time one person heals one thing the whole humanity Moves moves forward the whole humanity, because we are interconnected people energetically. You know, it's all about the collective energy. We are not individual. Like if we want to to be uh, or to to approach life from an individualistic 
perspective, this is where loneliness comes. This mm-hmm. is where the disconnection comes. Mm-hmm. You know, but if we all come and say we're all connected, we're all connected, we're connected with one another, we're connected with the universe, we're connected with the planets, we're connected with God, we're like, my success builds on yours, your success builds on, you cannot yeah. succeed without the people yeah. you have, right, yeah. with all what you're doing, yeah. if you don't have people who are supporting what you're doing, yeah. you're not a successful person, right, Never. and how do you succeed alone, I don't believe one hand can clap alone, right, Mm-mm. so we're here to help each other um, uh, evolve, each other grow mm-hmm. from inside, you know, and that's what will create shift. You want a better job, you mm-hmm. want to become a CEO, uh, you want more money, you want a better re- relationship, more aware kids, you need to, uh, you're good. You need to do this, not because it's loyalty, to, but you need to go, you know, it's not because it's a workshop that we are offering, mm-hmm. but you really need to get inside of you and change your relationship with you. Mm-hmm. If you don't do that, you can't you can't succeed. Okay. And if you do succeed, it's always material, but there is no fulfillment. Mm-hmm. There is no that feeling of content. There is no that feeling where I say I'm good enough. Who says I'm good enough today? We all want to be better beings. Mm-hmm. You know, better at everything we do. A better mother, a better employer, a better, like you know. Mm-hmm. But then the better is relative, right? What's better for you is not better for me. What's good for you is not good for me. And all of these binaries or um, plus minus things are relative to Mm -hmm. people. They they are different in cultures. They differ they differ from one person to another, from one belief to another, from one society to another. Who says that? You know, who says? Who Mm. says? And and the workshop will really teach people. Um, one main, main, main skill, you know, the two, the two first basic skills that we speak about are the loving essence mm-hmm. that we are all loving and we are working together as today as a divine beings, seeing the loving essence on one another. OK, regardless of your behaviors and how good or bad they are. And then heart centered listening, because we've done a survey at the inner space back uh, a few years back. And to see what's the most common upset, what are the most common upsets for people, you know, mm-hmm. because everybody's upset because of something, yeah. right? And the first common thing that came is that he or she doesn't listen to me. Mm. They don't listen, mm-hmm. you know, and today we have a lot of <laughs> emphasis from coaches like you have to speak up, you speak what yeah. you want, express yourself. So say I'm, I'm an expressive person, you know, I come to Mesar and I tell him whatever I want to tell him. If he doesn't listen the first time, the second time, the third time, I will shut up. I will stop saying what yeah. I want to say, right? Yeah. Because he's not listening. So mm. it's. And I think heart centered listening, and I would like to add just something uh, on that. Heart centered listening is the the uh, is is all about communication. Yes. And if we, if again, um, I, I like I like to break down the word because it really gets to the meaning of it. So communication comes from the word commune, and commune commune means to share. Mm-hmm. And so when you are having this heart to heart conversation, you are really sharing a part of you with that person. And so when there is real listening, deep listening, and realizing that this person in front of me is a loving essence going through a certain thing and they want to talk about it and we you know being present being here and now being fully focused in the moment gives that other person the opportunity to experience themselves through you and that's and how that's, they that's heal. the power of it that's how they heal you know what i've done an, an exercise like this where we were paired up and the other person will speak for three minutes and you have to listen but you're not allowed to say anything yes. or communicate anything. And it was so hard. And you realize how much we don't listen no. without trying to say something immediately. Yeah, <laughs> we want to prove them yeah. something. You you're know? like, yeah. You want to kick in and like you're busy. When mm. somebody's sharing, you're busy. To What do I want to answer now? Exactly. You know, but you don't have to answer. Mm. And in the workshop, we say every single person of you have all inner resources needed to resolve your own issues. All what we're doing is we're reminding you of that. Mm -hmm. We're giving you the tools and the skills to go back to yourself and find a way to resolve your own issues without depending on anyone, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You don't need to give advice. Sheen has it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need my advice. And, And you notice that realize when you really listen, 
the things that come up are on a different level, you know, because the other person will feel what? Received. Yeah. Received for what they are sharing, received for who they are, non-judging, like I'm not judging you no matter what the situation is, no matter what the issue is, you're just there, a loving essence, and I'm here to just hear what you have to say and to be present in your healing process, you know? And imagine again, nine times three, 27. Everybody's, everybody's moving upward. Yeah. And I believe this is, um, uh, I believe uh, spiritual psychology is a movement mm -hmm. and loyalty to your soul for me is beyond a workshop, you know? And but f for us, it's not a business in that sense, you know? It is beyond that. We have a vision and a mission to really share the learnings that had worked for thousands of people since 40 years. And it really changed people, mm -hmm. right? It it worked, it changed. And, you know, we are not people who are just like signed up with the University of Santa Monica just because we think this is trending, spiritual psychology. But because 10 years later, we, we really experienced the effect of this work on us, you know, mm -hmm. and it translated at so many aspects in our lives. And we feel responsible as uh, spiritual beings to share this with with as many people as we can because uh, we're just like uh, I think we're doing something good to humanity yeah I love that but um, I have one final question for yes. you before we wrap everything up which <clears throat> I ask every guest which is, and I'm sure you two will have incredible answers for this is how would you define success now that you have had your spiritual awakening how would you define success Nor, let's start with you you know, for me, it's it's such such a big thing. You know, I uh, I believe that I uh, succeeded uh, within myself. You know, that success for me is personal. I succeeded in uh, in. Uh, really really becoming aware of my ego uh, becoming aware of the behaviors that I do in my life and that shift that I had inside of me is what made me successful because uh, because as Maisar said you know I'm able to relate to people in a different way um, uh, for me success has to do zero with money zero with what I do uh, but then any smile on my in the face of the people that I um, that I uh, deal with any time, like they just come and say, you know, you've just changed my life. This is this for me is success because my success, as I said, builds on everybody else's success. So it's not individualistic to me; it's collective. And I believe uh, I'm, I'm just a successful mother and a successful wife, a successful woman, a successful career woman, I would say. And it's just inner, just inner. I'm not, I don't want to be successful. I don't want to achieve more than I've achieved. Yes, I want to um, just spread this more, but it's not about having more, mm -hmm. you know, it's about sharing. Yeah, and this is, success for me is purpose. I found my purpose. That's the word. Wow. I found my purpose. And I, I, found, I found my gifts that I want to share with my community and the world around me. Thank you. Maisar? <clears throat> you know, I thought about the question uh, you know, you, that you sent through. Mm -hmm. And it was like playing in my mind. Like if I, I get asked that question, how would, I, how would I answer it? And then I dropped the thing and I said, I will just be spontaneous. Great. Success to me is inner peace. Success is embodying my authentic self. Success is being the joyful, joyful person that I am. Success, as Norse mentioned uh, too, that seeing the smile on 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 my my client's uh, face, being able to work for, together through the pain, through the mm -hmm. through all the chaos, that is uh, success. And I, I, I say it and I mean it. I today I don't I don't measure my success with anything that is tangible. Mm. Because that I'm not gonna take away with me anywhere. The true thing that you that the soul takes on 
is you know all those things that are beyond this physical world you know the love the 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 care the uh, the uh, un- the unconditional love the inner peace the 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 joy these are things that money cannot buy yeah you know people waste their, w- w- you know spend years and years and years accumulating you know more houses more cars more you know more what what have you but in the end if they only remember that they don't take with them not a 0.00000 infinity with them then why what why would i do it mm-hmm. it's not mine to begin with why would i do it but i think it's just the uh, i think i went off topic a bit but i think it's just the the that uh, the greed mm-hmm. yeah that is destroying the world and i will i want to add one more thing sure. if we are to really change this planet if we are to really make a change then we need more aware people to do okay. that because only aware people are able to override all this evil i would say around the globe that is putting us in such in, in, in these you know dark situations that we're in uh, uh, today because i definitely believe that there is a bigger scheme uh, being played out and uh, we need more aware people that's what they don't want and that's what we want wow well nor my sir thank you so much thank you this was incredible thank you and remember 27 to 29 of october we have loyalty to your soul in dubai all the links will be in the description box below on how to register the discount code and i think we all got a preview of what this will look like i'm super excited and hopefully i'll see you there thank you thank you so much thank you thank you